we have an update on the Pac-2 and how it might affect the Mountain West. Conference realignment is always in the news, so we're back on the Big Mountain to keep you updated. Hey, it's great to have you on the mountain. I am JY. This is my good friend Steve. And Steve, it's been, I think, two weeks since we did anything on the PAC and the Mountain West. Uh, Wilner just had an article last week. I think it came out on January 24th. A couple things I want to talk about there. Give my opinion on a couple of those things. I just want to remind people where the revenues are at in 23-24. We did talk about that in the settlement agreement that we did, but I just want to remind people where the PAC 12, 23, 24 revenues uh, sit. And then I also want to give my kind of personal opinion, personal take on where I think things are at for the PAC 2. I'm actually going to say, I think, in my opinion, one uh, path forward is off the table for me. I don't, I, I don't think of all the different ways they could kind of go about uh, maintaining a pack or merging or things like that. There's one that I'm going to take off the table right now, and I'll tell you why. Okay. But let's start with uh, the Wilner article. I'm not going to go through the article other than to bring up a couple points. Um, and it's some interesting stuff here. So the first thing I want to say is the meteorites still for 2025 have not been determined yet. Um, I think we'll probably hear something about that in the next maybe month or two. I don't think it'll be, be too, too long. And that's what Wilner says as well. And he points out, and, and I think I totally agree with this, it's going to be more about exposure for these two teams than it's going to be about revenue. You know, they're going to be getting a substantial amount of revenue from the pack because of that settlement and things going into the next two years. They really don't need a TV deal to bring in gobs of money. It really, for them, is going to be about exposure and, and how much more of the country can they get to watch their game. Keeping them, keeping themselves in the national spotlight and remain national programs. And Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Keep, them, keep themselves up in what that used to be, that Power 5 yeah. type of level. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's going to be interesting to see is what are they going to do with our good friend, Commissioner Kliakov? Kliakov. <laughs> um, you know, he, he does have some value. It's pointed out that, you know, he obviously sits on the CFP Management Committee. Obviously, the Beavers and the Cougars want to maintain uh, um, the opening for a potential to be in the college football playoffs. Uh, so I don't think we really have any idea right now. I mean, we've talked in the past. Obviously, there's a lot of friction, I think, with all parties and the commissioner especially we saw we saw friction as we went through some of the lawsuit uh, cases and, and some of the things that we did there between Schultz, the president of Washington State, and Commissioner Kay. I don't think they're good buddies uh, at all. So, you know, kind of it's, it's still up in the air, but there is some value, at least uh, for now, just kind of maybe keeping things as is for the time being. Clearly, the two parties in control right now are Oregon State and Washington State. And if he's not going to do what they ask, they'll kick him to the road. But I think if he wants to maintain, uh, he has, I think, a year left on his contract or something like that. Just, you know, be their little, you know, runner and, and do their do their will and you'll be able to make your, make your money and then get the heck out of town. Maybe but, easier to kind of just let him continue to run the administrative right. part of the skeleton of well, the conference instead of trying to get rid of him before the end of his contract, try to fire him for cause or exactly. whatever and have another legal battle. Exactly, exactly. So the other thing that was brought up, and I'm going to give my opinion as to, I think this is going to be a really telling area in terms of where Oregon State and Washington State may end up post-2026. So obviously we know where they're going to be at this year, maybe in 2025, but where are they going to be in 2026? So brought up the Pac-12 network. And its distribution agreements end this summer. So now, yes, there's some assets there in terms of the technology, uh, but that can quickly become a liability if you're not using that network for anything. Um, So it's going to be interesting to see here what Oregon State and Washington State do. Can they make this, you know, uh, a liability in which they're going to need to get rid of? Or can they create an asset out of this technology, whether it's through the sale, through a lease, through ongoing, uh, you know, certain uh, productions for former Pac-12 members or whatever the case may be. Um, But they're going to have to kind of determine what are they doing with the Pac-12 network and all of the uh, infrastructure associated with that. I have to say, uh, this year, for the first time ever, I watched a few games on the Pac-12 network. Just interested, you know, because of my uh, my focus on the Big Ten with some teams moving there and just kind of... So I had an interest this year. I watched some games... I was impressed by their production value. Mm. 
Um, they had some on-location stuff at the different stadiums, at the different fields. Um, their their talent, on-air talent, seemed pretty good that they had at least for like the pre pre-game, post-game stuff. Yeah. So they they have something to work with. It's not just some kind of janky like student-run thing. If anyone's sure. thinking that, right? It is. It, it looks like it's actually a professional operation. I don't know what value is there. Right. But I was imp- I was surprised and impressed when I saw a couple games this year on there. So I say that to say, you know, if they go go ahead and sell this. Mm-hmm. To me, that leads me to believe that they're not looking to rebuild a right. pack. Good they're going to sell those assets. They're going to get out what they can, and they're going to move on to something else. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But if they hold on to it and lease it or whatever the case may be, then I think that uh, continues to show, not that they will definitely be re- rebuilding the pack, but that is going to be still their goal to try to move forward. Let's hold on to these assets, create some revenue out of these assets, not make them this you know horrible liability that they're losing money on. Um, so I, I, it'll be really telling, I think, this year in, in 2024 to see what they do, especially over the summertime. Do they keep these assets and try to create some revenue or do they sell them? I think that could be a really telling piece of, of the pie for you know, the, the potential ongoings of a pack, whether they stay or they go. Something to keep an eye on. Really Absolutely. Yeah. So the other piece, I just want to remind people again, we talked about this for the revenue of the pack 12 for 23, 24, the year that we're in right now, as part of the settlement, all schools are going to be getting distributions of 23, 24 revenue, but the 10 departing schools are forfeiting a small portion of that. Um, I don't think we know specifically what that small portion is. I don't think it's a huge amount. Um, and most of the distributions of that, you know, kind of there was news back in early December that Oregon State and Washington State withheld any distributions. Mm-hmm. Shortly after that, we had the settlement. Mm-hmm. So the distributions are going to be happening. Um, and I saw some back and forth. I think people are still a little confused as to what in the world's going on. Distributions will happen for all 12 schools this year. It's just that the departing 10 will have um, a small forfeiture of what those revenues are. It's amazing when you look back in, in hindsight, the moves and counter moves, yes. you know, withhold some distribution and then all of a sudden there's a settlement. It's, it, you know, you can kind of see it. It's almost like pieces on a chessboard. You know, it's funny looking back now, it's like that all happened actually kind of quickly. But yeah. when we were in it, it right. felt, you know, in between updates, it felt so long because yeah. you were just waiting and waiting and waiting. But now when you look back, that all happened in about a three-ish month period. Like, that's really fast. Warp speed compared to the potential of what we're going to continue to see in the ACC. Yes, for sure. So the last thing I want to talk about, and I do want to hit the Oregon State uh, baseball team. Ooh, yeah. We saw that just break. But I want to get to uh, my thoughts on where I think the schools might be in 2026. And this gets back now to the Mountain West, right? Um, so I'm still seeing a ton of comments about this reverse merger i know you don't like that you're like a merger's a merger and of course when they people say reverse they mean the mountain west going to the pack instead of the two schools going to the mountain west it's a merger either either way but i think when you see comments on message boards the reverse is when they go uh, whatever but um so i i first want to remind everyone and we again talked about this i'll put the i'll put the link up here in terms of that settlement because we get into details on that um, so if you're interested in that, click on that, click on that link. Uh, but I, I first want to remind everybody that it would take nine of the 12 Mountain West schools to approve a dissolution of that conference right now. Um, nine of 12. I, I'm going to sit here and say, personally, I do not see that happening. I do not think you get that sort of majority to dissolve the Mountain West. So if that means they're not going to dissolve... In my opinion, this reverse merger is extremely unlikely. And I said, I'm going to take something off the table. For me, I'm taking that off the table. I I just don't see the PAC-2 taking all 12 Mountain West schools for a a whatever, PAC-14, PAC-West, call it whatever the heck you want to call it. I don't see it happening. Um, I'm not sure what would happen if if they take eight of the 12 for, as an example, you know, I think they would probably have to dissolve that conference you're not gonna have a four conference thing but i really don't see them taking all 12 um and because that you have to have nine of 12 mountain west schools approve a uh, dissolution of that conference i just don't see that happening so for me the big mountain i am taking this reverse merger as people call it completely off the table right now now my my theory on this could change yeah i just don't see them being willing to take all of those schools my opinion 
Do you want to push back on that? So before I give my thoughts, okay. I want to ask you a question. I'm yes. going to interview you. Okay. Okay. All right. So you're saying you don't believe that that they will take all that all twelve will leave that the, that the pack would take all twelve. Correct. So can you give some more depth behind that reason? Why do you not think all twelve they will take all twelve? I just don't think there's value. I don't think they they see enough value in all the all twelve mountain. So West like schools. some of the bottom. So I'll Hawaii you know or... I'm, I'll pick on Hawaii. Yeah. Sorry, Rainbow fans. I'll pick on you, and you know there's others, but I'll pick on Hawaii. I just there's not enough value there. There's not enough revenue there. If they want to try to maintain a pack like they used to have, which is impossible, but it's close to being what they used to have, they, they can't do it with on Hawaii. They just they're just not going to do it with a Hawaii. And, you know, you see all these rumors out there. I know we got some great commenters. They're throwing these other schools out. Um, so that was going to be my other thing. So yeah. so let me move on. I'll, yes, I'll answer yes. that and question. Come back to me. Um, well, I'll answer it with this. So, so okay, JY, you're saying they're not going to do a reverse merger. What do you think they could do? Well, everything else to me is still on the table. And I'll kind of start with, to answer your question, okay. with an option. And it is rebuild the pack. But it's not rebuild the pack with 12 Mountain West schools. Okay. It's going to be rebuild the pack with... I don't know. I'm going to say three to five. You know, I see some people saying six to eight. I don't even think they take that many, honestly, Mountain West schools. I think potentially they invite three to five Mountain West schools. I'm not saying these schools would go. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying if they look to rebuild a pack, they take three to five Mountain West schools. I think they look at Cal and Stanford if they can get out of the ACC and who knows what's going to happen with the ACC. And, you know, DeKal and Stanford jump ship, and within a year they're going to be going, we really screwed this up, or less. Um, so maybe they look back at Cal and Stanford. And there's some other ones. You know, a, a couple other schools, you can, a lot of people comment on different teams and, you know, trying to get down into Texas or whatever the case may be. Um, but I think you can get there. You Say five Mountain West schools, say the Pac-2, say Cal and Stanford. There's nine schools. They pull another one to three, and there's your 10, 12 uh, conference that, that they'd be looking for. So I just don't see them all going. So that's kind of my answer to your question-ish. I don't think they have the value. Okay. I think it's all about value. Um, the other thing I, I still have on the table is Oregon State and Washington State joining the Mountain West. I think that is still a possibility. I think the reverse is not going to happen. And I want to be clear, by a reverse, I'm talking all all 12 Mountain West schools. So you have a 14-team conference, which is the Mountain West plus the Pac-2. I don't see it happening. So the only way it happens is if they join the Mountain West. Now, you would say, well, why would they do that if they don't think the value is there? It's a risk-reward type of thing, right? The, The reward for the Mountain West, it's a stable conference. They have the members. They're going to know what that looks like. There's more risk in trying to build it and pull these lower revenue. And then, and then you're, they're dragging along, so to speak. So to me, it's, it's a little bit of a different scenario if they join the Mountain West. I think that would only happen after they try all options to make their own PAC conference. Um, but I still think that's an option. I'm going yeah. to leave that on the table. The other one that I have is they just join another conference. You know, I'll throw ACC out there. We don't know what that's going to look like in 2026, but potentially join another conference, ACC, uh, Big 12. Um, I, you know, I think maybe the ship sailed for the SEC and the Big 10, but in two years, you never know. Um, so to me, those are the three actual realistic uh, choices for these schools. Join the Mountain West, rebuild your pack, join another conference. That's where I'm at. Did I answer your question? I think Close so. Close enough? Yes, and I do right. have... If whenever you're done, I do have okay. some comments I want to add. Well, the only thing I wanted to bring up was the baseball. So go ahead okay. with your comments. All yeah. right. So, so for me, I'm still gonna I'm gonna be stubborn and cling to the it doesn't matter between the merger, the reverse merger, and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna cling to my original thoughts. I think in some way, shape, or form, I think that the uh, the mountain the four the twelve teams that are in the Mountain West now, yeah, and the uh, and Oregon State and Washington State. However, that is compromised. Whether it's them joining the Mountain West or joining the pack, or just you know dissolving the the pack due to some you know worry about liabilities and whatever things sure. we've talked about, and just creating a brand new conference. I think those fourteen teams. I still think that's the most likely scenario. I agree with you. I think that Oregon State and and Washington State are going to exhaust all other options. Yeah. Uh, because they're still clinging to the concept of a, a power five or a power four or whatever. Um, 
where so they're going to look you know does the big 12 have a fit does the acc have a fit well you know whatever right but, but i think the end game it most likely is for those 14 teams to be together in a league and i don't care if we call it reverse merger forward merger sideways merger <laughs> any kind of merger um i think they're going to be combined um because i think it makes the most sense okay um there's just i i i don't see a a a what i think now is the big two um yeah. i don't see a fit in either one of those the yeah. sec or the big 10 there's just I, there's no way you can make the math work that there's a fit i think and, and you know me i'm a beaver believer yeah love washington state as well but i just cannot see a scenario where the, those two conferences either either one of those conferences would take these two teams uh and so if if not i think as the, the the scheduling alliance or you know, scheduling agreement plays out over the next year or two i think the new picture of college football is going to become more apparent where there is a big two and there's everybody else and oregon state and washington state are going to realize joining the acc whatever is the shambles of the acc most likely in yeah. a couple of years depending on how this lawsuit goes or joining a big 12 that just took on a whole bunch of teams a whole bunch of programs you know, we'll see what their their future looks like in a couple of years. I think that those are going to look less and less viable, and to, it's going to look more most appealing to them to to have that regional conference and be, you know, they would expect to be the two crown jewels of that conference mm -hmm. uh, to keep themselves. Especially, we're going to talk. We're going to have other episodes about the college football playoff going to twelve teams and possibly what the future looks like. So, if you have a twelve or even sixteen team playoff. They can be the top two teams in the Mountain West, keep that regionality. Um, I think whatever we call it, it, that's the most likely scenario that's going to happen. And a lot of that is going to become apparent as the scheduling alliance takes place and it gives them time. And, and that's what I've said over and over again, is I think that scheduling alliance will give them time and yeah. give everybody in college football time to understand what is the new landscape of college football and for them to see kind of what their place is, is in that new landscape and where they have the best path path forward to making the college football playoff because that's what gives you relevancy. That's yeah. just the new reality is you have to have a path to the college football playoff um, and being in a conference with those teams, you can still play big, important games that are going to get on FS1, CBS, Fox, whatever, nighttime games on Friday nights, Saturday nights, big, important games that can give you a, a springboard into the college football playoff. So I think that that's most likely. I, I don't ha yet have an opinion. You, you've kind of drilled down your opinion a little yeah. bit tighter than mine. I'm, I'm not there yet because I don't know exactly what shape or form that's going to take. So I think it's a perfect time to remind viewers, especially if they're new, we are going to be doing a series, College Football 2030. The first episode is going to come out on Thursday. We're going to be looking at the NCAA Charlie Baker's letter that he just did about a month and a half, two months ago, um, and kind of where we think the NCAA is going to be in 2030 and what is NIL going to look like in 2030. So if you're interested in that stuff, stay tuned to our channel. I promised some OSU baseball yeah. uh, discussion. Big announcement. Just wanted to bring it up. It just hit, I think, two days ago, at least as we're recording this. It'll be a few days till we get this out. But um, I believe it was on Friday. Uh, that they're going to be doing an, an independent schedule this yeah. year. So, you know, we obviously talked about when the uh, scheduling agreement was released for the football. We They didn't know at that point what was going to happen with any of the other sports. Then obviously we knew, uh, I did an article or an episode on the West Coast Conference that they were taking all the other sports except for baseball. We now learn that the OSU is going to be going independent at baseball. You know, to me, that that's my theory on that is, they think they can have a more competitive baseball schedule yeah. by going independent than if they would go with the West Coast Conference. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what that's all about. Um, and probably with the Mountain West. They think they can they can create a, a more competitive schedule on their own than in, in either conference. So that's what they're going to do. So good on them. I wish them the best. We don't do baseball around here, but we do beeves and cougs. And, of course, I had to bring that up. Yeah, and, I, and I'll say – uh, you know, Oregon State, one of the premier baseball programs in the country. Um, and that's a sport where they're used to traveling a lot due to the weather and the climate in different parts of the country. It's just baseball teams travel a lot. That's just part of it. Mm -hmm. So I think that will work. I, I, I imagine the level of their program, they'll have a pretty 
uh, easy time getting a, a like national level schedule. Sure. Uh, so I think that's a good. It's that's probably the best move for them as a temporary thing until they figure out what conference they're really going to be in in a couple of years. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, for those of you who know that we follow the Pac two, you know, we're the Big Ten and the Mountain West, but we're the Pac two two. We're going to stay on this. Yep. We appreciate them, especially since they're going to be playing football in the Mountain West this year. You know, they're to me they're Mountain West schools yeah. at least for football next year. We're gonna we're gonna track them. We're gonna call the games. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna pick the games. Um, so yeah, we are Beavs and Coog Beavs believers, and we still haven't come up with the Cougs, but Coog courage. I don't know. Um, we're gonna be on on those those two teams here for the for the rest of this year at least, if not more. So. With that, hey, we thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like this. Make sure you subscribe. We've got a lot of content planned to come out. We'll see you guys next time on the Big Mountain.